Welcome to the bold analysis. I paid close attention to William Ruto's uh, tour of Bomet County. And I was paying attention to some two significant, for some three uh, significant reasons. Number one, I wanted to hear what the president is going to say about the cabinet backlash after he picked his team and Ray Ludinga declined his uh, broad-based government deal. The second thing I was paying attention to see is William Ruto's messaging because just on Saturday, the president spent better part of the day meeting with pro-government bloggers. And what normally happens is he will say something, then pro-government bloggers will pick it up from him and then amplify. That is normally the strategy that is going. Remember, for the better part of the week, Denis Situmbi and the State House, the so-called strategic communication team, which according to me are just propaganda team, have been quiet. And the other third reason I was waiting to see is what he will say in respect to the new threat by the Gen Z's to head back to protest on Tuesday. And in fact, to my surprise, I actually met great disappointment. In church, and I think Kenya Kwanzaa must pick one narrative and run with it. You cannot keep on changing this narrative. Even if you cannot be consistent on service delivery and policies, but try to pick one narrative in the face of a crisis and run with it. In church, when the president was speaking in that church, he told the congregants there that all those who have been sponsoring anarchists, uh, the anarchy according to him, should come out and give their alternative point. <laughs> I want to challenge those who are sponsoring, orchestrating, funding this violence to step forward and give us their alternative views on how to take Kenya forward. They must not remain anonymous. They must not remain formless or faceless, they must step forward and tell us beyond anarchy and destruction and violence and mayhem, what are their alternative plans for Kenya? <laughs> I challenge them, the shadowy people, the faceless people, I challenge them to step forward and tell us if they have any alternative ideas for taking Kenya forward. We are a democracy. We are very proud of our democracy. And we cannot surrender our democracy. to faceless, formless, anonymous anarchists who want to use violence, loss of life, destruction of property to destroy our country. Remember, the voice here is addressing some group of people that have been allegedly sponsoring anarchy, this anarchy. Remember, this started from Uhuru Kenyatta, Mount Kenya Billionaires, Ford Foundation. I've seen him also blaming the media today. So that was the first narrative. The first narrative here is that some people are sponsoring the protests. And so these people should come out and should, they, they should not say they are formless or rather they are tribeless. Now, after that, something very important, very interesting happened. For the first time, I've, I've just been reading around that a crowd was mobilized. 
And this crowd was mobilized, was mobilized so that William Ruto would actually do a political rally. That rally was great disappointment. After asking in church for those who are sponsoring the protest to come out, he went out in a rally and said that the Gen Z's that have been protesting will now meet his raw power. In fact, in a clear sign trying to threaten them. Now, I want you to pay attention, listen to that video. But this is the video where after this it was a heckled. But before I show you the heckling one, I want you to look at the body language of those who are responding and the way they were interacting with the president. Going forward, we will protect the nation. Going forward, we will protect the nation. We will protect life. We will protect property. We will stop the looters. We will stop the killers. We will stop mayhem. We will stop anarchy because Kenya is a democracy and we want a peaceful, stable nation. And our issues are resolved using democratic means. I want to promise you it's going to stop. Enough is enough. I want to finance bill. Mimi nimewacha finance bill. Nikawaita wakanasema hawataki kuja kuzungumza na mimi. Wakaniambia niende huko kwa X. Mimi nikaenda kwa X. Wakatoroka huko hawakukuweko. Wakaniambia tuitishe mazungumzo. Nimeitisha mazungumzo wamekataa. Nimewaambia wanaendelea kusema wao ni faceless, wao ni formless, sijui wako nini. Mimi nimewaambia sasa my friends, you know, I have given a chance to everybody to say whatever they want. You know, it cannot continue like this. The country is much more important than any group of people. We must stand together as a nation, protect our nation, and make sure that Kenya is a democracy. Tunaelewana ama ni magani jameni? Tuko pamoja? Watu wa Bomet mnasema tuwe na amani? Mnasema we want peace? Eh? Mnasema? You want peace? Tunudia we want peace. Munasemaje? 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 Ebu nisikie tena? Tunataka amani sio? Sasa sisi tunataka amani mtu akiwa na maneno akuje kwa mlango ya mbele atuambie ako na mpango mdala mbadala auzia wa Kenya wa Kenya wataamua. Yes in the 2 minute speech I am not seeing that audience the Gen Z and the protest is now an emotive thing. William Ruto is speaking in Bomet. The understanding is that that is his backyard. So what I would ordinarily expect is some jubilation and people supporting his word on that Gen Z. But people are not buying it. And in fact, you can see that the crowd, even for them to say we want peace, he seemed to be the one telling them to say it. It is not that crowd that said we want peace. The president seemed to be guiding the crowd in saying we want peace. But after this, the heckling happened. And look, listen to this.
So from this incident, you'll realize two things. Number one, the president wants to take a narrative with people. And I know his, uh, I know those who would appear, those who will support the Kenya Council will come out and use that soundbite to say that Kenyans want peace. In fact, you cannot force peace. And do we have absence of peace? Yes, we have peace. The only thing is that people are asking some legitimate questions. And even from the crowd, you will realize, or rather you will agree with me, that they did not approve what the president was actually telling them. They did not approve that statement from President Ruto. The heckling happened, and from that point, actually, if you see that video heckling, they're moving, not that the president is on top of the car. So the convoy is moving, but somewhere from the background, way far from where it is, some people are heckling the president down. So that is Bomet County. So I will want to explain really why the combative issue, why the combative approach. Now, and I told you I was paying attention to the Bomet because I also wanted to see what the president will say in the wake of the second wave of the protests that um, 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 the Gen Z have been talking about. And he got it. What he did is taking them head on. I want to explain about that combative approach. But before it, something interesting happened in, um, in a church service in Kayole. The deputy president was in Kayole attending a church service. And there is a clergy, a member of a bishop who was addressing, and he used a stone to illustrate something very interesting that I would want you to listen to because... He seems to be explaining what exactly is the governance. Because when Solomon was putting this church, this temple, as you are putting the state house, because the state house is our, our house for all of us, there was one thing that was genuine and very specific. There was no chisel because the stones were dressed from the quarry first. So from the site, there was no work of quality because already it was addressed stone, meaning in the, in the site is just building, but in the quarry is preparation. I, I don't want to give you an advice because I'm not equal to it, but I'm telling you this, that go to the quarry, do the work of the quarry before you go to the site. We have seen the message that you brought in some stones that were not fully dressed. And out of it, there is a lot of noise, which should not be there. Let the noise be in the qua, in the quarry. And this is what. <laughs> if you see this stone, this one is dressed, functioned for a particular work. This is a dressed stone. It has been worked on. You are working on on a cabinet bring a dressed stone so that it can function in its, fun, in its position. It is designed for a particular function. This one is still in the quarry. <laughs> it is not dressed. Sasa ukitureteha kakuya na hajadressiwa, itakuwa shida. Itakuwa shida, noises will always be there. Kutakuwa na noise. Na tunabia mijadongu, musipitishe hii. It's already dressed. See, and in that, in that respect, I want to, en to welcome our DSG for this function. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I've seen people making fun, trivializing and saying 
that that man of God is saying things that uh, is saying those things in front of the deputy president Rigadi Geshagwa, and probably that is the voice of Rigadi Geshagwa. But because Rigadi Geshagwa cannot talk on such matters, he has decided to give that microphone to that clergy so that they can school the president William Ruto on that matter. The audience, according to me, if you look at this, if you look at, if you look at what that member of the clergy is saying, there is one who was saying, I don't know how to pray for the president and now I can even ask the God to take your son so that you pray for him up there. There is something that Kenya Kwanzaa and the president advisors must get. There is an attempt to create an us versus them. William Ruto's politics was premised on us versus them. Look at that statement while speaking in Bomet that I went to Twitter and I didn't find them. But the president addressed the audience in Twitter. We tried logging in, we tried joining that X space, it didn't go through. But those who successfully managed to be there were almost in the tune of 12,000. So when the president, and this is not new, even Murkomen said that Walienda X or Kapatwa Metoroka, what exactly do they try to insinuate? There is an attempt to go to the village and the rural counties, and those are speeches can only be made in the rural counties, because those fellows are not in Twitter, to try to create a picture that a Gen Z is some amorphous group that, you know, they are cowards who cannot and they don't have any point and they're just causing disturbance. I don't think that is it. And in fact, the kind of picture that the president is presenting in Bomet is not the truth. The feeling here is there is a point of, instead of mudslinging, oh, these are anarchists, these are this, these are that, I've seen Kalonzo saying these are not anarchists. We need just to settle, and I don't know why Kenya Kwanzaa cannot take that debate that the country is talking about governance. If this issue is about anarchists, then why did you even dissolve the cabinet? If these are not people that you recognize, if you don't recognize their concerns, how can you disband cabinet, ban Harambe's, suspend finance bill, and do all those concessions that is made, but then on the other end you believe these are, not, these are just anarchists who do not have a point? Something is not adding up. But let me explain why there is the turn of using the combative language, the combative strategy. Directly what the president is telling protesters is, when you come out to protest, you are going to find raw power. If it is police brutality, if it is light bullets, if it is this and that, everything, the president is telling protesters that don't come out to protest because I am coming for you. But why that combative language? Because all along, the president has been submissive, has been taking a low stand, and it's true that he's been acting very submissive and with a lot of humility. But I, I agree with one analyst who said that uh, that is just, you know, that is just a strategy, that is just trying. I can tell you, the way the president has spoken, the MPs that will start talking tomorrow, those who will be in TV stations, in radio stations, speaking in their social media pages, they will take that combative stand, the combative edge, and that is a very dangerous one. But this is the reason why Ru President Ruto is here. I think the Raila U-turn is really dashed his hope. You know, there is a story that President Ruto, I've, I've been, and we asked, President Ruto asked Raila to come and float the discussion about a dialogue. This is after Ruto asked for the dialogue and they refused. Then on that last week on Tuesday when the president was signing the IBC bill, President Rai Lodinga was there. Rai Lodinga talk about the, talked about the dialogue. They refused. And then it went and then he said he's giving cabinet slots to Raila. In Raila's constituency have also said no. And last minute push is that Raila has left that move to support William Ruto. So, and I think the Raila dialogue and the cabinet, you know, the, gov the broad-based government could have been the last weapon or rather the last tool that President Ruto was having.
So what Ruto has realized is he cannot, you know, he cannot negotiate any corner. He has to face the Gen Z head on. And I am just wondering what is so difficult with getting the voice of reason? Why do you think that as a president, you can just face the Gen Z with the gun, the bullets, the weapons? In the water cannons. I, I don't think that is the best way to approach it. The state has the machinery to engage, has the intelligence to gather and know what exactly then I'm supposed to do. I agree with what the lawyer Ahmed Nasir said that it is not so difficult to know what the country wants. But the president Tutu is frustrated after the Raila U-turn. Number two, this current governance uh, call for good governance has the population has narrowed it to Ruto must go. Remember, after he sent away the cabinet, after he dissolved the cabinet, the cabinet, there was some relative calm. But why he must ask himself, why are people saying Ruto must go? Now, after that, I remember some, 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 some senior advisors, uh, uh, political analysts in the country were saying that President Ruto how, now have a second chance to redeem himself. But what did he do? He recycled members of the cabinet. And then that's why people said, we are dealing with the tone deaf. We are dealing with a man who does not hear the people. So most of the decisions that he's made, you know, like for example, the cabinet decision, he's the one who made that decision. So he's getting worried because the people narrowed down to him and said, it's no root. But no one is talking about now the opulence. No. No one is talking about the finance bill. No. People are talking about NHIF. People are talking about the education, the, 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 the funding model in the university. People are talking about the capitation. The people are talking about the teacher's pay, the JSS. That is the discussion going on. So the buck stops with him. And he's getting a bit frustrated by the Gen Z narrowing the whole bad governance to Ruto must go. But he, he asked for the job, and so that is why accountability is on him. Number two, there is an understanding that the government seems to have crafted an understanding that they can neutralize the protests. I have seen people saying, because they said they are going to converge in place X on Tuesday or on which day, that is already giving government time to plan. And looking at the turnout last time, it was not that high, but they are looking at it and they're saying probably they can still manage it. And lastly, I think the state has realized that police brutality has been scaring away protesters. One of the reasons why some people may not come out to protest is the fear mongering and fear mongering through police brutality. So it is part of the strategy just to narrow, to suppress so that people don't come out. But that heckling in Bomet is very revealing. Probably they really need to look at it. Thank you.